Peace be upon you. Hello, friends. Welcome again to a series of lectures and meetings in automatic industrial control circuits. And the first circuit that I'm going about to work on, God willing. Please, how can we get it fully? And how we will operate at it as you are exactly in the laboratory that you connect it and electrical panel. Then you run it and check it all. Stay with me step by step and I will show you with pictures and movement everything. The first circuit is control circuit for running three phase motors. As you know, in any factory or commercial facility, the internal loads are connected to the external distribution network. The external distribution network always consists of three hotlines or three faces with the fourth neutral line returning to them. Therefore, when the subscriber cable or the factory cable enters the, the factory, all the total current for the loss is a total electric current that passes through this main cable that feeds the factory. Thus, if we have an electrical cable feeding a facility or factory in this form R, S, T, and neutral N. I will now explain to you the method of connection when we control one or several motors consisting of three phase motors. We will connect the first point with the first hotline R. The second point with the second hotline S. The third point with the third hotline T. Always in any electrical distribution panel, my dear friends, of course, it's necessary to enter a main circuit breaker, which is the breaker that will bear the value of the total current for all internal loads, whether this is a sub-panel or a main panel. Now, there is always a design rule that at any load you calculate the value of the full load and choose the circuit breaker as we explained earlier on the basis that the rated current or the nominal value of the current is twice the real or actual value of the load current passing through the circuit. Why? In order to live longer period of time and be able to withstand the thermal effect of the current 24 hours a day. Then this should be two times 32 amperes, which is equivalent to twice the value of the motor load. Okay? We complete the secure connection, starting from the circuit breaker and entering the contactor. And we connect the three terminals of RST to the contactor. And we will obtain the value of the contactor, as we said in previous lessons, through two criteria. Either the endurance value in watts or through the endurance value in amperes that passing through it under no normal operating conditions. Also, we choose the contactor at the same value as we choose it at the same value, a three phase of 32 ampere. And its nominal value is also twice the value of the current passing through it because it will pass through the main contacts of the power other than the control contacts that we will talk about a little more. Then from outside the contactor, we connect the overload as we explained previously. There are two types of overload connecting. It's possible that the overload is connected directly to the contactor and it's possible through other connections as you can see in this presentation. In motors, sometimes as a result of being exposed to certain conditions in which a high current is drawn, among these reasons is a drop in the voltage on the network feeding the motor. And it returns to compensate in its operation, which increases the percentage of the ampere increase inside it. And therefore, it can lead to the burning of the thermal coils in it due to excessive heat on it. Thus, we showed you the circuit of power. Now we want to show you how to control it and provide it with all the necessary protection for it. In motors, sometimes are a result of being exposed to certain conditions in which a high current is drawn, 
among these reasons is a drop in the voltage on the network feeding the motor and it returns to compensate in its operation which increases the percentage of the ampere increase inside it and therefore it can lead to the burning of the internal coils in it due to excessive heat on it thus we showed you the circuit of power now we want to show you how to control it and provide it with all the necessary protection for it the control circuit consists of a phase and neutral only so we take a point of from any of faces because my goal from the circuit the control circuit is to send an electrical signal to the control components such as com contactors and through the contacts the power circuit is turned on or off as needed the idea again is the logically control by controlling the contacts of the control switches to stop or turn on the function of the circuit to be operated by taking a connection point from the fuse on a main circuit breaker for the control circuit let it have a nominal value of 6 amperes or 10 amperes as the electric current of the control circuit is low because the loads of the control circuit are the magnetic coils of the contactors, signal lamps, and measurement indicators. After that, we connect from the main circuit breaker to the push button on. The operating button, which is marked in green because it expresses the operating state as it open in the nominal state, and when it pressed it becomes a normally closed and then passes the electric current to the rest of the components of the circuit and it operates after that we connect to the stop switch the push button off and it works perfectly it reverses the switch on as it disconnects the electric current from the bars of the circuit then the connection continues to the contact points 95 and 96 in the overload and then to the entrance to the contactor coil A1, A2 which is responsible for the magnetization of the contactor and works to connect the power poles of the contactor and then connect the auxiliary contacts with each other and open other contacts from each other then the connection is returned to the neutral line in the network as I mentioned, the push button on is always in the normally open, unlike the uh, stop switch is always at the normal closed. Now we see that the contacts of the overload 95-96 are always in a closed state. Also, contact points 13 and 14 of the contactor are always open, and I will use them at this circuit. This is how we finished connecting the power circuit and the control circuit. We will now see how to operate and consider yourself that you have connected these components in an electrical panel and you want to turn them on and check them. Simply, the first thing you have to look at the main circuit breaker of the control panel and make sure if it's raised in the direction of operation or descended down in the direction of stopping. So we are going to raise the breaker button because it has to be in this state. Now we run the motor by pressing the green button, the start button. And as soon as you continue to press it, it will be in a normally closed state. The electric current will start to pass in the circuit and since it's also the contact points of the overload are closed the current will continue to pass through the contact points of 95 and 96 and then to the magnetic contactor coil and thus will make the contactor become magnetized and attracted to the inside and the main connection point of the power circuit come into contact with each other in addition, the auxiliary contacts 13 and 14 will change to normally closed. 
What will happen? The motor is running. What is the reason? As soon as an electrical signal passed to the conductor coil, the three phase pools of the conductor were closed. Thus, the power circuit was connected to the motor. And with an electric voltage applied to the motor, an electric current was passed from the network RST to the main circuit breaker of the motor through the contactor and then through the overload and then finally to the motor to operate. In this way, you control the operation of the motor by controlling the operation of the contactor itself by sending an electric signal to the contactor coil. If I take my hand off the push button on, now what happens? The motor turned off. Why then? Try to think of the answer. Simply push button on the change from normally closed to normally open. Therefore the circuit was opened and the electrical signal was cut off from the contactor coil and the main contact position were open for the three phases as they returned to the normal as it was. Simply push button on a change from normally closed to normally opened and therefore the circuit was opened and the electrical signal was cut off from the contactor coil and the main contact positions were opened for three phases as they returned to the normal as it was. What's the solution to keep the whole circuit running even if I take my finger off the push button on? There is a simple solution which is the electric interlock which is a lock between the contacts of the start button and auxiliary contacts of the contactor 13 and 14. While I'm pressing the push button on, the electric current will pass through the switch and the rest of the control circuit. As soon as I take my finger off the button, the current will still pass through the lock path to the contact points of the contactor 14 and 13. Because they were previously in the connected state due to the magnetization of the contactor, the current will continue to pass through the interlock and then to the rest of the circuit. I mean as soon as I lift my finger, the circuit will still run through the interlock path and the motor will continue to spin. If I want to turn off the circuit, I press the push button off and with this I will open the electrical circuit as if I took scissors and cut the circuit. Important question. In the event that the electric current exceeds the limit set in the overload, what's happening? For example, if the full load motor is 16 amperes and the current rises to 18 amperes, quite simply the overload device will sense this value and separate contacts points 95 and 96 from each other, making them open and in this way the circuit is separated. Thus, we protect the motor from overheating caused by excessive amperes. I hope that I explained the idea to you in a practical and clear way, and thank you for listening. This is essential circuit for the operating of motors in large and small factories. As you know, the machines are mostly induction motors and have a high starting current. And I will show you in another lecture how to run motors through a star delta connection to limit high starting currents.